Let me, while we start the meeting, I'm going to try to work on this, um, but I don't want to hold the meeting up. So why don't we um, call the meeting to order um, for Tuesday, October 24th, the meeting of the planning board. Um, if I could have a um, introduction of everyone who is on attendance so we know who is with us. Um, you want to start introducing yourselves, members? Jim Davis, member. Cheryl Tugaya, secretary. Maggie Oldfield, member. John, you're muted. And myself, Sir, Meredith, serving as chair. And our staff who is with us, Josh, I hear you. Yes, Josh Eckert, the assistant director. Uh, Tim Zerwinski, Director yeah. of Planning and Community Development. And Julia? Julia Getman, Clerk. Great. Thank you all. Meredith, I had, uh, I, had, I had myself on mute, Meredith. I am here. Yeah, Sean Fahey, member. Uh, that's okay. Thank you. Was Thank you, Josh. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Okay, terrific. So the, the um, purpose for the meeting tonight, we have a single agenda item. And it's to review and to vote on the multifamily um, overlay district uh, language. Um, we had reviewed that at the last meeting where Maggie had worked um, very hard on, on pulling together um, some districts, um, which were a, a 15 unit per acre districts. And we were just gonna hear an update on Maggie on, on where you were with everything. And if you, so if you wanna, um, Sort of just start this off. That would be great. Um, sure. I hope everybody had a good week weekend. Um, so I um, wanted to thank you for um, giving me the chance to review my numbers. I did spend some time um, driving around all the neighborhoods that have been proposed, and even though I have been in all of them, I just wanted to um, really you know, look at it and through um, the lens of increasing the housing um, in those areas and how it would really impact those neighborhoods. Um, so I did spend a lot of time on Granite Ave and to Granite and um, Central. And, um, you know, I was able to increase some of the units on all of the, on a lot of the places we've already discussed. So 88 Wharf, I went up um, and um, so I increased the, the unit count at many of the places. However, I then did add two other additional um, um, unit um, districts to it. One was at, um, uh, Blue Hill Ave, the corner of uh, Blue Hill Ave and Brush Hill and um, and the parkway there where Milton Yoga is. So there are already six units existing um, at that location. And I thought it would be comfortable um, to, to increase it to about 10. And the other um, location, which is a new district that hasn't been discussed, but I confirmed with Tim um, on Friday that it was still within the half mile. And um, that was at the Goddard School, which has a you know almost an acre and a half. And that would allow for a minimum of 22 units um, um, in that area, but I bumped it up to 30. Um, so as I've said before, my leading principle has been to follow the statute and the statute is 15 units per acre within a half a mile of um, um, the transit and, of, and of, in a district of reasonable size. Um, you know, I don't need to go into all of my um, reasons. I've explained it for many, many, many months, and um, everyone's pretty much knows where I stand. I do believe that zoning is, um, 
it, it should not be reactionary. Good zoning definitely should not be reactionary. It should be slow and steady. And um, and I am not comfortable getting up to the thousand units that um, we talked about at our last meeting. With my additional changes, I was able to get up to about a to a count of about seven hundred and nine. Um, units, and I, I've just struggled with um, overburdening and destroying the neighborhoods that I love so much. Um, so I, um, I, I am struggling that I can't support something that has so many legal issues ahead of it. I do believe in um, being compliant with the statute. And I really think this is my best effort in complying with the statute. So that is where I stand. Thank you so much, Maggie. I, I do appreciate your, you know, I think we've all been looking at this with, you know, looking under every rock, to, you know, literally just turning over every stone to see where we possibly could put um, units and districts that would be the least impactful um, to the, to the really, you know, trying to preserve the natural historic character of the town. Um, and it's a challenge. It's not, it's not easy. So you have taken off, you took off Granite Avenue, did you? So I never had Granite Ave on mine because that is outside the half mile. So to re reiterate, my um, guiding principles were the statute, which was a half mile. That is the only um really very explicit um um direction that we have had in the statute we've had the half mile and the 15 units per acre so i stuck to the statute because if i started looking at the guidelines um the guidelines are um from what my understanding is that guidelines are not legally enforceable. They're not regulations. They are up for um, the possibility of being changed um, as um, you know policies change and as administrations change. And I have just been really very focused on the statute. I want to comply with the statute, right. and that's how I arrived at my number. And Granite Ave was not part of it. Okay. Maggie, um, or actually this, can I, can I ask yeah. a question? Go ahead, Sean. Yes, please. And other members. Yeah. Um, I, I understood that Granite Ave North is within a half mile. At least uh, I'm, I'm looking on what Util has provided with us. Uh, Josh, can you confirm if North is inside the half mile? Yeah, the two Granite Ave site is within a half mile radius of the Cedar Yeah, Grove that's what's station. okay. Great. So that's referred to as north, the two Granite Ave section. Um, would that would so that I, would that yeah. change? So I have that. In, I do have that. I have two Granite oh. Ave in mind. Yes. Yeah. You don't have south then. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And at two Granite Ave, I had it at sixty-two units last time. And I have increased it to 80 units. So again, I went by what we are comfortable with here in Milton, what we have passed um, through the special permit process in the past. And what I think we're all comfortable with is 88 Wharf. To me, 88 Wharf was sort of our model. And that was 73 units. And so I spent some time down at 88 Wharf looking at the site in which it sits. And then I went over to, to Granite Ave and sat over there for a little bit of time, drove over to Dorchester to the Keystone building. And I was able to um, increase that density to 80 units. That was part of my increase. And your total number now okay. is? 709. All right, <clears throat> Maggie, I know you really struggled with this and I know it, this is, you know, pushing numbers even higher than you were originally going to go. So I, I, I'm grateful for that. 
um, I think, well, I, I, I'll let the other board members speak, um, go ahead and speak as well. So any comments from other board members before I speak? Well, I, um, you know, my opinion, and I'll, I'll be repeating what I had said last week, I, uh, I support a 10% zoning plan. Um, I believe that would be consistent with an argument that's been made by a select board. Um, I believe our select board's letter dated 922 outlines reason and logic of why we should be considered a adjacent community. And I recognize the letter that was returned to us yesterday. And um, I, I do recognize that even in that letter, uh, you know, again, um, they're not willing to accept what the select board has outlined. Uh, however, um, it, it's my opinion that I think it's worth pursuing an adjacent community uh, designation and maybe that can't be achieved in the short term, the short term being um, this period of time between now and um, uh, the 12 four town meeting. However, um, it's my opinion that the select board has written in that letter from 922, a position that they are um, of a very sincere and serious uh, mindset. And for that reason, um, I would only support uh, an alternative article um, that has 10% uh, zoning. So I, I, I'll say what I said last week. Maggie has poured her heart and soul into something that she believes in, and um, she has every right to do so. Uh, and I, I, um, I hold no judgment against anyone for their position. Um, I certainly hold no judgment against Maggie for hers. Um, there, there are people that believe that what Maggie, Maggie's article outlines is, is uh, appropriate. Um, and there were people that believe, um, you know, what Cheryl has stated previously is appropriate. Um, I happen to believe that we are most appropriately a 10% uh, designation as an adjacent community. And I wouldn't be willing um, to uh, uh, be satisfied with the exchange of letters that have taken place to date between the um, EOHLC and our select board. So, um, I, 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 unfortunately, Maggie, I, um, I can't support, um, an article that doesn't reach 10%. No, and I understand that. And, um, I know, as I've said before, um, you know, and as a reasonable minds can disagree and I believe that and, um, I just um, feel like at this point in time, um, I can't, I can't increase it in good faith. Um, you know, I did happen to watch the Warren Committee last night, and I thought they had an interesting um, back and forth discussion, and um, I am, I feel more firmly in my position that. The guidelines are probably going to be challenged and probably going to be changed. And I don't want to put this town in a position where, where you are over zoning just to meet a number. I really thought my original amount was good zoning in places that we all could support and that we all want moving forward and increasing it. I feel like we're just um, randomly trying to pick neighborhoods um, just to meet a number. And I don't think that's how a good zoning is. Um, I know the, the, the length of time that, my, that I personally have spent and my family has spent to rezone our property. And that was just for one little piece of property. And this whole process, is so rushed and it's so unsettling to me that I'm not comfortable 
going through it and disrupting other neighborhoods. So I think my original, I still firmly believe in, and I think it would be good for the town, really good for the town, if um, even if um, the guidelines were um, changed or repealed, I still think that, that that would give Milton an opportunity for to create good zoning and good development. So thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much, Maggie. Um, Jim or, or Cheryl? So first of all, I applaud Maggie's work. I mean, that what you did was great from the heart honest and open, which I think is super important. Um, nice job. I can't imagine spending my weekend driving around, staring at properties, analyzing, overanalyzing, and all alone with nobody to bounce it off of. Just, just well done. Um, I've always been an adjacent community guy. So I agree with Sean that, you know, if we're going to do this, it should be a 10%. We should stick with our uh, what what I feel is our proper classification, which is adjacent community. Um, but even with that, I think that, you know, going through the exercise is great, but what we're doing right now is, is just rushing something through. And I don't know if it's to compete with a select board article or to give the, the townspeople a better option. I, I kind of see both of those, but I just think we need more time on this. I don't see why we can't just wait three, six months, go back to the maps and get it right. I don't think that even if we came to 10% tonight, I don't think it would be right. I think we need a little more time. And, and you know, if, if if we do nothing and just don't present an article, um, it doesn't close the door on tweaking your article, Maggie, and adding to it and getting to 10% or whatever we got to do to do something better than the select board and maybe a little bit more than what you have. So I, I, I'm, I'm a more time guy. I really think we need more time. So I would, I would be comfortable without an article so we can get it right in, you know, six months time, in three months time, whatever it takes. And I also would be comfortable pursuing whether it's legal action or showing that letter to a lawyer and saying, hey, do we have a chance? Do you think there's a good argument for fighting this in court to try and get a reclassification. The state says no. We, I say yes. I mean, who knows what would happen? I don't know what it would cost to show it to a lawyer, but it, it can't be that much to get another opinion. That's where I am. Great, thank you, Jim. And Cheryl, any comments from that you'd like to share? I, yeah, I have a sense I, of where. <laughs> but please, I, yeah, we um, I have had a lot of conversations about. Um, the compliant article that Tim and the select board have worked on. And I have expressed um, a viewpoint that um, I didn't see the point of submitting a non-compliant article because there's no such thing um, with respect to e EOHLC as sort of partially compliant or on a path to compliant or sort of maybe compliant. We don't we're not given the opportunity to pick the type of community that we are. We've been designated a rapid transit community. And so I, I feel as if we have spent a lot of time in our meetings talking about whether we're rapid transit or not, whether the trolley's really rapid or not, whether the design guidelines are legal or not, and a lot less time focused on what compliance looks like. We've spent a time of late, thankfully, on the maps and really working with our technical assistance consultants on the maps. And as you all know, I've spent time outside of our meetings looking at the language in the zoning to make it as uh, strong as it can be because the, um, the state has given us a lot of flexibility in the guidelines to tailor the zoning to each community and to our community. And I think um, these maps and the language, we're really taking advantage of that flexibility. So I still feel as if the compliant zoning is what town, need, town meeting needs to focus on. If we were looking to zone for multifamily housing, 
independent of this requirement of the MBTA community's law, we should be going through a different process. And I feel as if anything that's not a compliant article is just that. So as you know, I wouldn't intend to support this non-compliant article uh, to be submitted to the select board for inclusion on the warrant. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and, you know, as you know, I've, I've stated a number of times, I feel like whether it's our article or the select board's article, there's, we have made tremendous progress, but I think there still is a lot of work to be done. Um, and, but, you know, even in the last month, we've, we've made tremendous, you know, I think progress um, working on zoning language, discussing that. Um, but I, and I, I absolutely respect the select board's um, position in putting an article forth to town meeting. At this point, I don't feel like we have the article that I would want to submit um, on behalf of the planning board. I, I don't think we're ready. You know, we are, we are still, we don't have a build out analysis. We don't have a fiscal analysis. Um, there's some really important aspects to doing zoning that, are still incomplete. Um, and so, you know, I was hoping that we could come up with a number that it would be something that could be considered by town meeting that we could continue to work on. And, and whether the whether the select board's article goes forward or not, my plan is that we, we continue to work on it. And I know we've discussed that as a board because there's always room, you know, and ways to make it better, to improve. Um, but at this point, um, I don't think it makes sense to have um, a competing article um, right now with the, with the select board's article. And I think, um, you know, unless we really had something that was really ready, um, that we felt prepared to, and for myself at least, to stand up and, you know, and, and speak on and, and defend um, um, that sort of sense of, of you know, compromise and, and um, for those, you know, maybe town meeting members who want nothing, there's people who, you know, want full compliance. Um, I was trying to get to sort of something that was a sort of an in-between with, with what would be, and, and also, you know, in defense of our being adjacent community. So with that said, I, I just, um, I think it's better for us to continue to work on our article. I feel like we're at a point whether the select board's article, you know, moves forward, but that we can still, you know, let's see what happens at town meeting, and then we can pick up where we've left off um, and continue, you know, doing some really good work um, on this because this is a tremendous zoning initiative, and we want to make sure we get it right. So, um, at that point, I would not support. Meredith, we have lost your audio. Is everybody else still connected? I'm here. Okay. We're so close. Maggie, while we're waiting, um, I do thank you for your work on this as well. Um, I too know what it's like to walk and drive around those neighborhoods and to think carefully about um, the character of each neighborhood and how the zoning um, I, I uh, would say that I disagree that I think it could destroy the neighborhoods because I think we've really thought very carefully and hard about these all of the zoning parameters, but how we could um, 
fit some additional housing into the into these neighborhoods without destroying them. So, uh, but I, I know we have a difference of opinion there, but I did want to thank you for your efforts. You're muted, Maggie. Yeah. Yeah, we all work hard and we all bring different perspectives. And I think um, um, I think we all respect each other. And to me, that's the most important thing. We don't always have to agree, um, but I think we all respect each other and we all come from slightly different perspectives, um, but um, we all sort of still have to remain true to who we are. And um, that's sort of what I did um, here, so. Tim, I don't you... see Meredith on Tim, the screen any longer. She must be trying to dial back in. Yeah, yeah, if saying. I see her number again, I'll, I'll allow her to talk, but she, she hasn't rejoined as either a panelist or an attendee. And, you know, I think it's great that we t we could be afforded some time to really um, learn what the courts have to say. Um, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I've been talking to many and from all different backgrounds. Um, and, um, and, and I think um, it's, it's always prudent um, to weigh the risks. Um, I'm not afraid of taking risks when you own your own business. You know, every day is a risk. Getting up in the morning and uh, is a risk, um, but I think it's less risky to do um, to to take the wait and see. We're we're here representing so many different people in so many different neighborhoods, and we haven't heard from them yet. And I think we would be putting. I think it'd be more risky moving forward. Um, at this time, so. Um, so while we're waiting, Tim, can you, for the folks who are watching, um, explain the public hearing that's scheduled for Thursday, um, how that is going to run and, and um, the subject of the, of the public hearing? So the, the subject of the public hearing is the, um, the select board's article um, that is currently posted um, on the planning board website under development and zoning proposals. That's where we, um, you know, we, we put zoning proposals prior to town meeting. Uh, the select board is actually going to be voting on some uh, slight wow. modifications to that language um, that was um, approved by them in, in late September. Um, we've talked about this. Um, a lot of the development standard and site plan approval kind of um, edits that, that Charles proposed um, in addition to the the addition of some um, floor air ratio constraints. Um, and... Tim, I'm back in. Can you hear me now? Yeah, Meredith, we can hear Hello? you. Oh, sorry. All right. I didn't want to interrupt you, but continue. I'm back in. Yeah, no worries. Glad to have you back. Um, so uh, the, the, the public hearing, um, you know, is, is going to work pretty, pretty basic. Um, you know, we'll do a presentation on what is, you know, so far the final language, um, you know, not dissimilar from from other presentations that we've given. I think we'll try to go a little bit more in depth into, you know, what's actually in the language, um, you know, just so people have an opportunity to kind of, you know, hear that, um, you know, in a verbal kind of manner. And then I think, you know, it's 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 the board's hearing. So if 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 the planning board wants to continue, you know, discussing that language, they can. Um, I'm sure there are folks that you know want to be heard from the public, um, and 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 that's their opportunity. Um, so there'll be, you know, obviously a significant um, public comment portion of that. Um, we will be in the blue room, um, so we'll have folks in the blue room. We're going to arrange for um, if there's any overflow capacity needs. Um, we'll have the uh, meeting, um, you know, streaming on the TV in the kitchen conference room, and we'll try to set up um, a laptop down the hall 
in the uh, in the Baker room so that if there's additional overflow capacity needs, we can have people that are coming to uh, to town okay. hall in that room. Um, we'll also be um, it's a hybrid meeting. We'll also be on Zoom. So if people want to, you know, um, not have to worry about, uh, you know, crowding into the blue room, um, they can obviously participate via Zoom. Um, you know, just like all the rest of the the, uh, the planning board's normal hybrid meetings. Um, so that's what we're expecting for Thursday. All right, Tim. Thank you so much. Um, so I don't know where I, I where I lost you, but um, but I just you know I was just saying that um, unfortunately I'm not ready to move our article forward yet. I think we need more work um, still on our article. Um, so at this at this time. Um, I would make I would ask for a motion to withdraw um, withdraw our article, which we have uh, requested that the select board open the warrant this evening and have requested that they include the article. Um, I would make a motion that we withdraw that request. Yeah, Sorry. Yes. Go ahead, Maggie. I make, yeah, so I make a motion to withdraw the planning board's article from um, the warrant request to the select board. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, let's do, since we're all on Zoom, uh, a roll call. Um, Maggie? Um, yes. Jim? Yes. Carol? Yes. John? Yes. And myself, yes. Thank you. Well, that that concludes our- Meredith, um, can, I ask, yeah. can I ask one question? It, it might just, I may be just re asking Tim sure. to repeat something he's already said, but it, it, Tim, um, for this uh, public forum on Thursday, Will you be the one presenting the article in uh, to the public? Yes. Okay. Okay. And will the select board be there or just us? Uh, I mean, that, that's up to them. Um, I, um, I, my, my, my presumption has been that um, just like every other instance, I'll be presenting the content of the article. Um, but I, I don't know whether or not um, they plan on attending. Um, they, that may be something they discuss tonight. So is that normal? Is that the normal procedure? Usually it's um, the applicant presents. Is that normal that you're presenting on behalf of the select board? Well, I mean, in terms of zoning, um, I, I've said it before, we're, we're, we're outside of normal right now. Um, you know, typically these are planning board articles, um, you know, that, that may have a sort of a proponent, um, in which case, um, you know, this is the first time in a long time that we've done kind of, you know, townwide um, zoning on behalf of the town itself and not an individual property owner. Um, so I think, um, you know, that that may be something the select board discusses tonight. Um, you know, one of the members may, um, I, I don't want to speculate, um, but, you know, irrespective of anything else, um, you know, as, you know, an, an employee of the town, um, working for the town administrator, um, it would, you know, the, the actual sort of content of this thing would, 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 would fall on me, you know, irrespective of, of whether, you know, it was the select board or someone else. So would we, as a planning board, request that the select board presents it to, to us? Or a member of the select board presents it? I mean, I guess, what are you, what are you asking? You're asking the chair of the select board to go through the slideshow that I've given 50 times? Mm -hmm. Right. So this, so again, I don't know, since you just said this is uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I am asking. Would we as a planning board want to request a member of the select board to present it because this is their article? I don't think that's in the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish. I think it continues to perpetuate a select board versus planning board sort of uh, approach. I think if this were a planning board article, we would uh, likely have Tim uh, be presenting it. Um, the, he's been the lead on all of the presentations of compliance with the MBTA communities. 
Uh, I, I don't understand why he wouldn't take the lead. If you wanted to have a member of the select board um, give an introduction, I think they would be planning to do that at town meeting. The public hearing is to present the, the language of the article so people understand what will be voted at town meeting so, and, I, and to take feedback. And so in prior um, public hearings on zoning, uh, the planning board has weighed the comments and feedback from the public and decided whether um, it was able to make any revisions or if it chose to make any revisions to the zoning um, before it was voted at town meeting. And sometimes uh, it has, and sometimes it's, uh, it hasn't because it might be ruled out of scope. But it, the intent really is to get the public feedback. That's the intent, my understanding of the public hearing, to put it out for uh, everyone to understand um, and then to solicit as much feedback as possible. So you I know, don't uh, recommend- um, You know, this is, I, sorry, no, keep going, Cheryl. Keep going, finish. Uh, so I recommend that uh, Tim do the presentation um, as he was planning to do, that we um, actually seek as much public comment as possible. And then if there's time that we deliberate um, about the recommendation that we'll need to make, but I think we also have time in a future meeting to do that deliberation. So my recommendation would be to try and set as, aside as much time as possible for uh, feedback and questions from the public. Yeah, if, if I, I, okay, terrific. Yeah, go ahead, John. Yes, you were done, go. I have my hand raised. <laughs> um, I, I really didn't, I know, I'm only teasing. I actually didn't. Um, but, uh, you know, my own opinion, and, and I mean, I'm not sure um, how it's handled in the past, but I would prefer no matter whose article it is, planning board or select board, um, you know, Tim, Tim's, this is where Tim is great at presenting. And, um, and he, you know, my own opinion is he'd do it better than any of us and do it better than any of the select board. So I, I think, I think the town will be better served if he presents it. Uh, but, um, you know, the, the, the one question I have is, um, this isn't our article. Um, if questions are asked, I actually think a representative of the select board should be present you know, to answer questions uh, from the community, from the residents. Um, th that's where I think uh, a member of the select board would be very valuable for this public hearing because it's, I don't think it's responsible of us to be answering questions, you know, to an article that we didn't, you know, that, that isn't ours. Wouldn't Tim be answering, um, Sean, for the sort of technical aspects of it, I think? I'm sure. I'm sure he could, but you know, this isn't Tim's article. This is the select board's article. Well, that, that's up to the, I, I think the select board can decide, you know, what they choose to do. Um, and I'm sure Tim will pass on, you know, and, and discuss that with them. Um, Tim, just for, for regards to being sensitive to the, um, to the time, um, we just want to be able to, um, let the select board know that we have withdrawn our article for consideration. Um, will you be able to uh, do that or should I send an email? I just want to make sure that, that the information is given in um, a I, timely I, manner. I, I, Meredith, I think an email from you would be appropriate, but I'll also um, get okay. in touch with the town administrator just to let them know. Um, and I'll be at the meeting um, anyway uh, for, you know, to, to talk about that. And so I just have right. a comment. I want to follow up on Sean's comment. I don't want to lose that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I do. So I agree with Sean that I, I don't want to be the face of this article. I have said all along, I do not want my fingerprints or the planning board's fingerprints on this article. Um, this is a truly a select board's article, and so I'm wondering if we should make a motion um, for a select board representative to be at the public hearings to answer the questions. From okay, the so, so can I just make a comment here? We hold the public hearing because it's required by law to hold the public hearing on any zoning article that's submitted through a, the legal process, which could be by the select board, could be by citizens petition, it could be by an individual landowner, and it could be by the planning board. Not in my time on this board, which I'm in my ninth year, have we ever made a distinction between any of these? If there was 
uh, question. Um, I think if there's as much interest as going to be in this article and in this compliance and enough comments <clears throat> that if it's technical in nature and Tim can answer, I think Tim should answer. If it has to do with legal in nature, I think that should be um, noted and asked to be followed up uh, by the select board um, at a later time because we won't have legal counsel at the hearing. Um, so, you know, I, I think we have to be um, careful. We have hats. We were elected uh, to this position, and part of the of what's required is is for us to hold these public hearings, to take the public comment, and to and to make suggestions about what we're uh, being asked to do in terms of a zoning change in the town of Milton. So it, it's not up to us to say we like it or don't. It's it's for us to listen to the public and have that zoning be presented. Um, and so, you know, are we going to say every time that there's a new a zoning article that's not planning board initiated uh, that we don't want our hands on it or not? I mean, that that's just not doing our job then. I don't agree with you. No, my only opinion on public meetings is that there should be an opportunity for discourse. Uh, and, you know, if, if, what we're, if what we're saying is that if a question is asked um, that a select board representative won't be present to answer it, uh, I don't know that we're serving the residents um, as well as we should. I mean, I, I would think that any public hearing, no matter what the topic is, that uh, a resident could ask a question and be afforded a chance to to respond to it. Uh, Tim, Tim may have been um, uh, part of creating the article, but it's still not Tim Chawinski's article. So that's my opinion. I mean, we, we don't have to talk about this all night, but I'm not sure that we're serving the residents um, that well by not having um, a, a member of the select board present to be able to you know, uh, respond to questions. Cheryl, has there ever been an article presented and then the sponsor of the article not shown up at the public meeting? In your in your nine years, I mean, I, I don't know. This is my first with this. I don't think so, Jim, but it's up to them. You know, I, you know, I don't know that there's been a specific demand made uh, that they show that they do attend uh, because the language is to stand on its own you know and be uh, reviewed explained and uh, a recommendation made upon it i mean if somebody so, asks me a question i'm just gonna you know somebody asked me why there are 700 units on granite street i'm gonna say look you gotta go talk to the select board this is not me i don't agree with this so, I mean, and, I, I think it would be a great idea to have the select board or someone there that sponsored the article, at least backing it up or saying, I'll get back to you on that question or representing their thoughts into their article. I don't see why they wouldn't be there, but they wouldn't want to be there promoting it. This is a big deal. Yeah. So, to um, Jim's point, uh, I mean, I haven't been at every single hearing, but I've paid attention to quite a few of them. And if if the actual applicant, so for me, I had I made a zoning change. If I personally could not have been there, either my brother would have been there or our attorney would have been there. So I would think that a member of the select board would be there or their attorney would be there to answer questions. So I would like to make a motion um, to have a select board representative or town council be at the public hearing to answer questions from the residents. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's a request. It. <laughs> I, I just would like to frame that as a, as a request to have them come. But I, I don't, we why cannot. Can't, why can't it be a motion? Come. Why can't it be a vote? I can, I'll oh, second, it can be a vote, but, the, but I'm just I'll saying. I'll second Maggie's motion and then we can discuss. Request. Second. Can you repeat the motion? Yeah, that's, um, can you repeat the motion? My motion is to have a representative of the select board or their legal counsel at the public hearing to answer questions from the residents. So my, my comment is, I think 
respectful to, re to request. I don't think we can demand anything of any other board. Okay, so moving requests. forward then, so moving forward, if we have an applicant who wants to put forward a zoning change, you're saying that they do not have to have a representative at present at the public hearing? Well, well, I, I think Tim, the representative but, that's yeah. been designated by the select board to represent yeah. them to make this presentation. I missed that you guys. No, I, I, I don't. Uh, I mean, I, okay. I, I think one thing we should we shouldn't presume we shouldn't presume that they won't that they don't want to attend uh, unless unless right, somebody knows that they already have said they don't want to attend. I mean, this this discussion is is really yeah. centered on an assumption that they wouldn't be present. Um, well, they're not posting it, for Thursday, Sean, so they're not, they can't have a quorum at the hearing. I'm sorry? They are not posted for a meeting on Thursday, so they cannot have a quorum at, uh, at the hearing because they, today is Tuesday, they don't have time to post it before the meeting. So- It would be a select board meeting, it would just be five people. Just a representative. I mean, are they discussing select board stuff or, or there are? Maggie, would you accept a friendly amendment, a friendly to request a representative attend? Um, Member of the select board attend? Yeah, but to go back to why I think they need to be there is because, I don't know, we need a representative yeah. to answer the questions. And to Jim's point, would Tim be able to answer why 700 units on Granite Ave? Would Tim have that, the select board granting Tim the authority to speak on their behalf? I don't think it should be town council. I mean, I don't know if we can pay that guy, but I don't know why we would have him no, show, <laughs> unless he's free. They, they work on it. They work on it. It's not about dollars. I think, Jim, they, they work on a fixed value. So from what I understand, no matter what we need, um, they provide service for it. That's a, that's my understanding. So Flat fee for the years. Okay. Well, all right. It's a good job. I think. So if so Tim, we have a if Tim, in a second, Tim, so we need yeah. to. So if Tim has the authority. If Tim has been granted the authority to speak on behalf of the select board, then are we okay with Tim being that representative? Can I make a suggestion to the to the board, um, to our board? I I think we should handle this in a in a, in a um, I guess a, a more positive and um, and less aggressive manner. I think we should simply ask Meredith to contact. Um, the chair of the select board and and simply let the chair know that we would like to have somebody present from the select board you know to address questions and I you know there's a there's a level of decorum and professionalism I think we want to have within the town and between the boards and and just leave it at that and at that point they've been asked and and if they're willing to attend terrific we'll we'll be we'll be better off for their presence and if they decide that they they um, don't attend, um, then so be it. But I, I don't feel comfortable um, being so assertive with other boards in the town. No, and, I, and agree I, with do, Sean. I I mean, I do understand that um, sense, but I do think we we are in a in a different situation than normal. Um, I do feel like Tim is an elected. I feel like um, um, the electeds need to answer to the residents of the town. Um, Tim has said on multiple occasions, it's not his article. And I, I don't want to be in a position where the residents are out there in the room at looking for answers and a Milton resident, an elected Milton resident, isn't there to answer the question. Maggie, the presence or the lack of presence of 
a member of the select board will convey how strongly they really support the article. They want this article to pass. I'm sure they do. Uh, they have an opportunity to have it presented via the planning board in a public forum. Uh, I'm confident that they believe so strongly in it that a member of the select board will show up. And as I said previously, I don't feel um, an arm twisting is, is how I would want our board to handle this. But I'm only one member of the board. So I, it's I up to everybody fine. else. Um, well, all right. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes Meredith. Oh, sorry. I keep getting these signals that my the meeting has been disconnected. So I just wanted to double check. <laughs> I apologize. Go ahead, Cheryl. No, no. I just said uh, I agree with Sean. And I said, yes, I could hear you, Meredith. OK. <laughs> OK. Great. So we have a motion. So. Maggie, would you be okay with my requesting, um, you know, that somebody d does attend and so that that so Meredith, you're our chair, and if you are asking me to withdraw the motion, I will. Um, and to Sean's point, I, I do hope that the select board, um, you know, takes your advice. And I do hope a representative of the board shows up for each of the public hearings. So I'll withdraw it, Meredith, because you're asking. Thank you, Maggie. I appreciate that. I think we can yeah, we can handle um, um, communication on that. So okay. Um, is there anything else um, on the this uh, particular agenda item? Um, if not. Um, it is uh, 6.01 and I um, would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call. Uh, Carol? Yes. Aggie? Yes. Jim? Yes. John? Yes. Myself, yes. Thank you all for your time this evening. I appreciate it. And those who are in attendance who joined us this evening. Have a good, good night. night. Thank you. Good night, everyone.